Hello, uh, my name is Dirk and I am converting to Judaism, uh, liberal Judaism in England and my rabbi, um, Rabbi Danny Rich, uh, has very kindly given me a JPS Hebrew English Tanakh, which is the complete Hebrew Bible. Um, for various like neurodivergent reasons, I find it difficult to read. I find it easier to read out loud to someone else. Um, so I'm recording it and um, I very much doubt I'm going to read the whole thing recording. I'm going to do half an hour, roughly, at a time. Um, in synagogue, um, there are set readings for each week. Um, but I'm just going to be starting from the beginning. Um, so I'm going to be starting um, with the at the beginning of the Torah, which is the five books of Moses. And the first one is Genesis. Um, so I will be doing that. I'll try and remember to look up as much as I can, but um, I probably won't look up that much, so I apologise in advance for that. Uh, I will be reading in English. Um, my Hebrew is definitely not up to it. Um, so here we go with the beginning of Genesis. When God began to create heaven and earth, the earth being unformed and void, with darkness over the surface of the deep, and a wind from God sweeping over the water, God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, a first day. God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the water, that it may separate water from water. God made the expanse, and it separated the water, which was below the expanse, and it was so. God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, a second day. God said, let the water below the sky be gathered into one area that the dry land may appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the gathering of waters he called seas. And God saw that this was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation seed-bearing plants, fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it, and it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, seed-bearing plants of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that this was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, a third day. God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky, so to separate day from night. They shall serve as signs for the set times, the days and the years, and they shall serve as lights in the expanse of the sky to shine upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to dominate the day, and the lesser light to dominate the light and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the sky to shine upon the earth, to dominate the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that this was good. And there was evening. And there was morning, a fourth day. God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and birds that fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. And God created the great sea monsters and all the living creatures of every kind that creep, which the waters bring forth in swarms, and all the winged birds of every kind. And God saw that this was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and increase. Fill the waters in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, a fifth day. God said, let the earth bring forth every kind of living creature, cattle, creeping things, and wild beasts of every kind. And it was so. God made wild beasts of every kind, and cattle of every kind, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. And God saw that this was good. And God said... Let us make man in our image after our likeness. They shall rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the cattle, the whole earth, and all the creeping things that creep on earth. And God created man in his image, in the image of God. He created him, male and female. He created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fertile and increase, fill the earth and master it, and rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and all the living things that creep on earth. God said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant that is upon the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit, they shall be yours for food. And to all the animals on land, to all the birds of the sky, 
and to everything that creeps on earth, in which there is the breath of life, I give all the green plants for food, and it was so. And God saw that he had made what all that he had made, and found it very good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. 2. The heaven and the earth were finished, and all their array. On the seventh day, God finished the work that he had been doing, and he ceased on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because on it God ceased from all the work of creation that he had done. Such is the story of heaven and earth when they were created. When the Lord God made earth and heaven, when no shrub of the field was yet on earth, and no grass of the field had yet sprouted, because the Lord God had not sent rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the soil, but a flow would well up from the ground and water the whole surface of the earth. The Lord God formed man from the dust of his earth. He blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and plant placed there the man who he had formed. And from the ground the Lord God caused to grow every tree that was pleasing to the sight and good for food, with the tree of life in the middle of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and bad. A river issues from Eden to water the garden, and it then divides and becomes four branches. The name of that first is Pishon, the one that winds through the whole winds through the whole land of of Havilah where the gold is. The gold of that land is good. Bedelium is there and lapis Bedelium is there and lapis lazuli. The name of the second river is Gihon, the one that winds through the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris, the one that flows east of Ashur. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and placed him in the garden of Eden to till it and to tend it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of this garden you are free to eat. But as for the tree of knowledge and good of good and bad, you must not eat of it, for as soon as you eat of it, you shall die. The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a fitting helper for him. And the Lord God formed out of the earth all the wild beasts and all the birds of the sky and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that would be its name. And the man gave names to all the cattle and all the birds of the sky and all the wild beasts. But for Adam, no fitting helper was found. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep upon the man. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that spot. And the Lord God fashioned the rib that he had taken from the man into a woman, and he brought it to the man. Then the man said, This one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for from man was she taken. Hence a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, so they become one flesh. The two of them were naked, the man and his wife, yet they felt no shame. Now the serpent... This is three, sorry. And also, I apologise if my pronunciation is incorrect, because I don't know a lot of these names. <laughs> now the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild beasts that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you shall not eat of any tree of the garden? The woman replied to the serpent, We may eat of the other fruit of the other trees of the garden. It's only about fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said you shall not eat of it or touch it lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, You are not going to die, but God knows that as soon as you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like divine beings who know good and bad. When the woman saw that the tree was good for eating and a delight to the eyes, and the tree was desirable as a source of wisdom, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave some to her husband and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they perceived that they were naked and they sewed together fig leaves and made themselves loincloths. They heard the sound of the Lord God moving about in the garden at the breezy time of day, and the man and his wife hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Lord God called out to the man and said to him, Where are you? He replied, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? Did you eat of the tree from which I had forbidden you to eat? The man said, The woman 
you put at my side. She gave me of the tree and I ate. Blaming a woman. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman replied, the serpent duped me and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you did this, more cursed shall you be than all cattle and all the wild beasts. On your belly shall you crawl and dirt shall you eat. And the days of your life I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. They shall strike at your head and you shall strike at their heel. And to the woman he said, I will make most severe your pangs in childbearing. In pain shall you bear children, yet your urge shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you did as your wife said and ate of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed be the ground because of you. By toil shall you eat of it all the day of your life. Thorns and thistles shall it sprout for you, but your food shall be the grass of the field. By the sweat of your brow shall you get bread to eat until you return to the ground. For from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. The man named his wife Eve, because she was the mother of all the living. And the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. And the Lord God said, Now that the man has become like one of us, knowing good and bad, what if he should stretch out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever? So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to till the soil from which he was taken. He drove the man out and stationed east of the Garden of Eden, the cherubim and the fiery ever turning sword to guard the way to the tree of life. Four. Now, the man knew his wife Eve and she conceived and bore Cain saying, I have gained a male child with the help of the Lord. She then bore his brother Abel. Abel became the keeper of sheep and Cain became a tiller of the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the soil, and Abel, for his part, brought the choices of the first things of his flock. The Lord paid heed to Abel and his offering, but to Cain and his offering he paid no heed. Cain was much distressed, and his face fell, and the Lord said to Cain, why are you distressed and why is your face fallen? Surely if you do right, there is uplift. But if you do not do right, sin couches at the door. It's urges towards you, yet you can be its master. Cain said to his brother Abel, and when they were in its field, Cain set about upon his brother Abel and killed him. The Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Then he said, what have you done? Hark, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Therefore, you shall be more cursed than the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. If you till the soil, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. You shall become a ceaseless wanderer on this earth. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is too great to bear. Since you have banished me this day from the soil and I must avoid your presence and become a restless wanderer on earth, anyone who meets me may kill me. The Lord said to him, I promise. If anyone kills Cain, sevenfold vengeance shall be taken on him. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest anyone who meet him should kill him. Cain left the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bore Enoch and then he founded a city and named the city after his son Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad and Irad begot Mahujael and Mahujael begot Methusael and Methusael begot Lamech. Lamech took to himself two wives. The name of one was Ada and the name of the other was Zillah. Ada bore Jabal he was the ancestor of those who dwell in tents and amidst herds. And the name of his brother was Jubal. He was the ancestor of all who play the lyre and the pipe. As for Zillah, she bore Tubal, Cain, who forged all implements of copper and iron. And the sister of Tubal, Cain, was Namar. And Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. O wives of Lamech, give ear to my speech. I have slain a man for wounding me and a lad for bruising me. If Cain is avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy-sevenfold. Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth, meaning 
God has provided me with another offspring in place of Abel, for Cain had killed him. And to Seth, in turn, a son was born, and he named him Enosh. It was then that the men began to invoke the Lord by name. 5. This is the record of Adam's line. When God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. Male and female, he created them. And when they were created, he blessed them and called them man. When Adam had lived 130 years, he begot a son in his likeness after his image, and he named him Seth. After the birth of Seth, Adam lived 800 years and begot sons and daughters. All the days that Adam lived came to 930 years, and then he died. When Seth had lived 105 years, he begot Enosh. After the birth of Enosh, Seth lived 807 years and begot sons and daughters. All the days of Seth came to 912 years, and then he died. When Enosh had lived 90 years, he begot Kenan. After the birth of Kenan, Enosh lived 815 years and begot sons and daughters. All the days of Enosh came to 905 years, and then he died. When Kenan had lived 70 years, he begot Mahalal. After the birth of Mahalal, Mahalalel, Kenan lived 840 years and begot sons and daughters. All the days of Kenan came to 910 years, then he died. When Mahalalel had lived 65 years, he begot Jared. After the birth of Jared, Mahalalel lived 830 years and begot sons and daughters. All the days of Mahalalel came to 895 years, then he died. When Jared had lived 162 years, he begot Enoch. After the birth of Enoch, Jared lived 800 years and begot sons and daughters. All the days of Jared came to 962 years, then he died. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he begot Methuselah. After the birth of Meth- Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and he begot sons and daughters. All the days of Enoch came to 365 years. Enoch walked with God, then he was no more, for God took him. When Methuselah had lived 187 years, he begot Lamech. After the birth of Lamech, Methuselah lived 782 years and begot begot sons and daughters. All the days of Methuselah came to 969 years, then he died. When Lamech had lived 182 years, he begot a son, and he named him Noah, saying, This one will provide us relief from our work and from the toil of our hands, out of the very soil which the Lord placed under a curse. After the birth of Noah, Lamech lived 595 years and begot sons and daughters. All the days of Lamech came to 777 years, then he died. When Noah had lived 500 years, Noah begot Shem, Ham and Japheth. 6. When men began to increase on earth and daughters were born to them, the divine being saw how beautiful the daughters of men were and took wives from above those that pleased them. Among those that pleased them. I'm mildly dyslexic. The Lord said, My breath shall not abide in man forever, since he too is flesh. Let the days allowed him be 120 years. It was then and later too that the Nephilim appeared on earth. When the divine beings cohabited with the daughters of men who bore them offspring, they were the heroes of old, the men of renown. The Lord saw how great was man's wickedness on earth, and how every plan devised by his mind was nothing but evil all the time. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on earth, and his heart was saddened. The Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the man who I created, men together with beasts, creeping things, and birds of the sky, for I regret that I made them. But Noah found favour with the Lord. Noah. This is the line of Noah. Noah was a righteous man. He was blameless in his age. Noah walked with God. Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth. The earth became corrupt before God. The earth was filled with lawlessness. When God saw how corrupt the earth was, for all flesh had corrupted its ways on earth, God said to Noah, I have decided to put an end to all flesh, for the earth is filled with lawlessness because of them. I am about to destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make it an ark with compartments and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you shall make it. 
The length of the arc should be 300 cubits. Its width 50 cubits and its height 30 cubits. Make an opening for daylight in the arc and terminate it within a cubit of the top. Put the entrance to the arc in its side. Make it with bottom, second and third decks. For my part, I am about to bring the flood. Waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh under the sky in which there is breath of life. Everything on earth shall perish. But I will establish my covenant with you and you shall enter the ark with your sons, your wife and your sons' wives. And all that lives of all flesh you shall take two of each into the ark to keep alive with you. They shall be male and female. From birds of every kind, cattle of every kind, every kind of creeping thing on earth, two of each shall come to you to stay alive. For your part, take of everything that is eaten and store it away to serve as food for you and for them. Noah did so, just as God commanded him, so he did. I guess the sea creatures, they were fine. They weren't sinning, they were fine. They can all live. <laughs> Seven. Then the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark with all your household, for you alone have I found righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean animal you shall take seven pairs, males and their mates, and of every animal that is not clean, two, a male and its mate. Of the birds of the sky also, seven pairs, I don't know why the birds needed it, seven pairs, male and female, to keep seed alive upon the earth. For in seven days' time I will make it rain upon the earth, forty days and forty nights, and I will blot you out from, blot out from the earth all existence that I created. And Noah did just as the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood came, waters upon the earth. Noah, with his sons, his wife and his sons' wives, went into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Of the clean animals, of the animals that are not clean, of the birds and of everything that creeps on the ground, two of each, male and female, came to Noah in the, into the ark as God had commanded Noah. And on the seventh day, the waters of the flood came upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, in the 17th day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst open, and the floodgates of the sky burst open. The rain fell on the day, fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. That same day, Noah and Noah's sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth, went into the ark with Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons. They and all the beasts of every kind, all the cattle of every kind, all creatures of every kind that creep on the earth, and all birds of every kind, every bird, every winged thing, they came to Noah into the ark, two of each of all flesh in which there was breath of life. Then they just entered comprised, thus said they entered comprised male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days on the earth, and the waters increased and raised the ark, so that it rose above the earth. The waters swelled and increased um, greatly upon the earth, and the ark drifted upon the waters. When the waters had swelled much more upon the earth, all the highest mountains everywhere under the sky were covered. Fifteen cubits higher did the waters swell, as the mountains were covered, and all flesh that stirred on earth perished, birds, cattle, beasts, and all the things that swarmed upon the earth and all mankind. All in his nostrils were the merest breath of life. All that was on dry land died. All existence on earth was blotted out. Man, cattle, creeping things and birds of the sky. They were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left and those with him on the ark. Whoever sheds the blood of man. Oh no, I missed one. I missed one page there. <laughs> yeah. And when the, oh eight, and when the waters had swelled on the earth one hundred and fifty days, God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the cattle that were with him in the ark. And God caused a wind to blow across the earth, and the waters subsided. The fountains of the deep and the floodgates of the sky were stopped up, and the rain from the sky was held back. The waters then receded steadily from the earth. At the end of one hundred and fifty days, the water diminished. So in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters went on diminishing until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first of the month, the tops of the mountain had become visible. At the end of the forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven. It went to and fro until the waters had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove to see whether the waters had decreased from the surface of the ground. 
But the dove could not find a resting place for its foot and returned to him to the ark, for there was water all over all the earth. So putting out his hand, he took it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days and again sent out the dove from the ark. The dove came back to him toward evening and there in its bill was a plucked off olive leaf. Then no one knew that the waters had decreased of the earth. He waited still another seven days and sent the dove forth and it did not return to him any more. In the 601st year, in the first month, on the first of the month, the waters began to dry from the earth. And when Noah removed the covering of the ark, he saw that the surface of the ground was drying. And in the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. God spoke to Noah, saying, Come out of the ark, together with your wife, your sons and your sons' wives. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you, birds, animals and everything that creeps on earth. And let them swarm on earth and be fertile and increase on the earth. So Noah came out together with his sons, his wife and his sons' wives. Every animal, every creeping thing and every bird, everything that stirs on earth came out of the ark by families. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord. And taking of every clean animal and of every clean bird, he offered burnt offerings on the altar. The Lord smelled the pleasing odour, and the Lord said to himself, Never again will I deem the earth because of man, since the devisings of man's mind are evil from his youth. Nor will I ever again destroy every living being as I have done. So long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. 9. God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fertile and increase and fill the earth. The fear and the dread of you shall be upon all the beasts of the earth and upon all the birds of the sky, everything with which the earth is astir, and upon all the fish of the sea that are given into your hand. Every creature that lives shall be yours to eat, as with the green grasses. I give you all these. You must not, however, eat flesh with its lifeblood in it, but for your own lifeblood I will require a reckoning. I will require it of every beast of man too. Will requ I require reckoning for human life of every man for that of his fellow man. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed, for in his image did God make man. Be fertile then and increase, abound on the earth and increase on it. And God said to Noah and his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and your offspring to come, and with every living thing that is with you, birds, cattle and every wild beast as well, all that have come out of the ark, every living thing on earth, I will maintain my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God further said, This is the sign that I set for the covenant between me and you, and every living creature with you, for all ages to come. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds upon the earth, and the bow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and every living creature among all the flesh, so that the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the ever everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures, all flesh that is on the earth. That, said God said to Noah, shall be the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all the flesh that is on earth. The sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham and Japheth, Ham being the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole world branched out. Noah, the tiller of the soil, was the first to plant a vineyard. He drank of the wine and become drunk, and he uncovered himself within his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father's nakedness and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a cloth, placed it against both their backs, and walking backwards, they covered their father's nakedness. Their faces were turned the other way, so they did not see their father's nakedness. When Noah woke up from his wine and learned what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Curse be Canaan, the lowest of the slaves shall he be to his brothers. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem. Let Canaan be a slave to them. May God enlarge Japheth and let him dwell in the tents of Shem, and let Canaan be a slave to them. Noah lived after the floods 350 years, and all the days of Noah came to 950 years. Then he died. That's it for today. 
Suresh wobbled that. I hope that you enjoyed it and bear with my um, pronunciation and losing my place. And I will do some more soon.